yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday Suddenly I'm not half the man I used to be There's a shadow hanging over me Oh, yesterday came suddenly Why she had to go, I don't know She wouldn't say Something wrong now I long for yesterday Yesterday Love was such an easy game to play Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday Why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't say. I said something wrong, now I long for yesterday. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far. Now it looks as though they're here to stay Oh, I believe in yesterday Yes, I believe in yesterday
Maayong gabi sa tanan. Good evening to everyone. We are all gathered here today to celebrate the life and to honor the memory of our dearly departed Dr. Jose Veloso Abueva, the 16th president of the University of the Philippines. Pepe Abueva, as he was fondly called, was highly regarded and very well loved by many people, some of whom are here tonight to share with us how their lives were touched by this exceptional yet humble man. Our first speaker is the current president of the University of the Philippines. Please welcome Professor Danilo Ladizabal Concepcion. Isang mapayapang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Nakikiramay at nakikidalamhati po kami ni Gabi at ng buong UP community sa pamilya at mahal sa buhay ni Professor Emeritus Jose Veloso Abueva. Nakikiisa din po kami sa pagbibigay-pugay sa isang tanyag na akademiko, political scientist, public governance expert, at higit sa lahat sa ikalabing-anim na presidente ng Universidad ng Pilipinas. During my investiture as the 21st president of UP, I had the immense honor and privilege of having all the six former UP presidents present to share their guidance and insight with me, gleaned from their own years of experience at the helm of the National University. Dr. Jose V. Abueva, who served as UP president from 1987 to 1993, was one of those who were there. His academic credentials are outstanding. He earned from UP his Bachelor of Arts degree, cum laude. Thereafter, he attended the University of Michigan, where he earned his Master of Public Administration and PhD in Political Science, minor in Sociology. Here in UP, he rose from the ranks, from graduate assistant to instructor in political science and sociology to professor of public administration. Eventually, he became a professor emeritus of public administration and political science in 1998. He mentored generations of UP students in liberal arts, social sciences, and public administration. Many of these students have made their own mark in the public sector and in their professions. His peers, colleagues, and fellow faculty members recognize and honor his achievements as educator and academician, political science and public governance scholar, and public servant. As UP president, Dr. Aveva's vision for UP was social transformation. In his 1987 investiture speech, he said, and I quote, our vision of the Philippines and the mission of the university have become one. The university must examine itself to provide learning and leadership for social transformation and thereby help build a just, humane, and democratic society, close quote. Like any UP president, Dr. Abueva faced many crises and challenges during his term. His administration coincided with the post-EDSA-1 revolution era that saw the Marcos regime collapse and the democratic government return to power. Sectors in the academe moved vigorously to promote the Filipino language and laymanized knowledge. In this, Dr. Abueva led the charge, institutionalizing a Filipino language policy 
within the university. In May 1989, Dr. Abueva established the Centro ng Wikang Filipino with offices across the UP system. During his term, the Senate rejected the proposed RPUS Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation, and Peace, which would have given us 10 more years of the U.S. presence at the Subic Naval Base. UP President Abueva led UP against the American stay, even though it ran counter to the position of President Cory Aquino, who played a role in his selection as president of UP. Dr. Abueva is, of course, remembered for establishing the Socialized Tuition and Financial Assistance Program. In keeping with his vision of UP as a reflection of a just, humane, and democratic society, he sought to equitably distribute the burden of educating our people by making affluent students subsidize the education of the poor. This, in reality, is a way for the poor to attain equal opportunities with the rich. As UP President, Dr. Abueva stood by his belief in the power of conversation, dialogue, and debate in principles over personal connections, even the height of protests, opposition, and clamor over some of his projects and national issues. In the wake of people power, he was UP president, with the country at the cusp of globalization. He strove to create a university that is able to navigate and anticipate the social, political, economic, and cultural shifts. Until the end, he continued to watch over his UP beloved, to mentor the students in his care, to promote education in shaping one's future, to pursue scholarly work and advocate for a truly equitable, just, and democratic society in our country. And he did so all with a heart committed to peace, understanding, and nonviolence. Dr. Jose B. Avueva, 16th President of the University of the Philippines, was a fearless and principled man. In this troubled time we live in, with all that we know being shaken to the foundations, we look to his example of leadership for courage and inspiration. Maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Abueva. Nagpupugay po kami sa inyong mahusay na pumumuno sa Universidad ng Pilipinas at sa inyong walang pagod na pagtataguyod sa demokrasya, katarungan at kapayapaan. Sisikapin po namin ipagpatuloy at pagyamanin ang inyong mga naiwan at nagawa para sa UP at para sa bayan. Paalam, President Abueva, daghang salamat po. Marami pong salamat, President Danilo L. Concepcion. Our next speaker is a Professor Emeritus of Political Science and the 18th President of the University of the Philippines. Please welcome Dr. Francisco Nemenzo. Again, President Francisco de Menzopo. Yes, for President. Please go ahead, Bob. 
and the profession, professional achievements of Dr. Jose V. Agueva are, known to, are well known. So I need not speak of him as a scholar and an academic leader. I prefer to speak of him as a boss, mentor, and friend. It was he who launched, who launched my career, my academic career in UP. He was the one who advised me to take up public administration as my, from my bachelor's degree. He hired me as his research assistant for when he was writing his uh, PhD dissertation. As the Associate Dean of the Institute of Public Administration, he recruited me to the UP faculty. Then he recommended me for uh, a scholarship grant, for a, for a Rockefeller grant to do my PhD in America. Upon hearing that I could not go to America because the American embassy canceled my visa. Pepe was so concerned, he rushed to our house to console, to console me for what he thought I consider a great misfortune. But I told him not to worry because the joy, the, sudden, the sadness, my sadness was overwhelmed by the joy that of not having to leave behind my girlfriend. So when Pepe and I, uh, when Princess and I planned our wedding, our natural choice for Ninong was none other and Pepe Boyga. <clears throat> in 1987, Pepe and I were placed in an awkward position. Both of us were nominated for the same posi position as president of the University of the Philippines. In those days, the Board of Regents would choose the most, the next president from the, the top five nominees of his true votes held in all UP campuses. I topped the straw polls, but I did not want to beat my former boss, my mentor, my Ninong, and my friend. So I had to withdraw before the Board of Regents meet. And I was writing my letter of withdrawal. Pepe came to urge me to, to not to withdraw because the regents who intend to vote for me might go for the remain, remaining candidates. So I stayed in the race until the end. But I requested the student regent, now Senator Clico Pangilina, to tell the others not to, uh, to, to count me out, but also to tell them that, my, that I am endorsing uh, Dr. Abueva. In 1989, President Boeva made me the Chancellor of UP Visayas. The timing was just right, because soon after, the media in Cebu pilloried him for his language policy, whereas before, English was the compulsory medium of instruction for all courses, except in the Department of Filipino and Philippine Languages, President Abueva 
JFD faculty members were already proficient in the national language, the option of teaching in Filipino. He also encouraged the regional units to promote the use of the regional languages. In fact, the first part of his policy was based on the findings of many researchers that students grasp the nuances of complex ideas better if taught in the language of their own, if taught in their native tongue. But the critics ignored, ignored the second part of the policy. in order to accuse Pepe of promoting Tagalog at the expense of the regional languages. Who could refute this criticism, criticism better than a Cebuano Chancellor of UP Visayas who speaks better Cebuano than the English speaking critics? Pepe was in fact a proud Visayan from Bohol, together with Chief Justice Davide and Manila Bulletin publisher Napoleon, Napoleon Rama, he formed a circle of Visayans to plan the concert of Visayan melodies to be sung by Dulce and Pilita Corrales. The project became uh, the project collapsed, however, because of a quarrel over the inclusion of Yo Yo Villame among the outstanding Visayan singers. Pepe later revived and expanded the group into an association of eminent Visayan professionals in Metro Manila. He called the group Kadugong Visaya. In what, what bound us together was our common love for the Cebuano lang Visayan languages and the Visayan music and culture. As uh, UP president, UP, uh, Pepe held cultural soirees at the executive house and invited a popular singer for, for such occasion. Inevitably, he would regale us with old Visayan songs because he loved to sing and he had the voice to go with it. Pepe, Pepe gave the, his, his talk at our golden wedding anniversary in Cebuano. So, sorry na lang sa lahat na hindi makaintindi ng aming wika. Princess and I will fondly remember our 70th birthday, our 70th wedding anniversary just two years ago when Pepe serenaded, serenaded us with our favorite love songs, Matudila. I will also remember Pepe for what I am sure many of you do not know, that he was an avid collector and inventor of jokes about the Wolanos. I will not gives examples of his jokes because the best of them cannot be translated into English. They can only be appreciated if told in Cebuano with a strong Bolano accent. Indeed, President Josevi Aboiva personified the university's ideal of a liberally educated person, a well-rounded human being and a gentle and a true gentleman. So Padayon Pepe, may you find the peace we all seek in life. Thank you.
Salamat, President Todong Nemenzo. Our next speaker is UP Professor Merita from the National College of Public Administration and Governance. Please welcome the Secretary of the Department of Education, Secretary Leonor Magtolis Briones. Today was among my first professors in the field of public administration. Along with Raul P. De Guzman or RPG, Abelardo G. Samonte or Bell, and Dodong Nemenso. JVA and Dodong became UP presidents, while RPG and Bell were later appointed as chancellors of UP Los Banos. As a professor, JVA enjoyed a very high academic stature. His reputation preceded our first day of class. We graduate students were terrified of him. He had very high expectations of his students, and we had to work very hard on our papers. Brave classmates had to be careful when they dared to recite. I was so relieved to pass his subject. I was surprised when I was invited to join his research team. He was then writing a biography of the late President Magsaysay. He already had a research associate and a senior research assistant, and he needed a junior assistant to help in data gathering. My main task was to monitor the official gazette and review accounts of the daily activities of President Magsaysay. I tried to be as quiet and unobtrusive as possible, even as I listened avidly to his animated discussions with his research associate and the senior research assistant. I learned very much from my academic eavesdropping. My life as an invisible data gatherer changed when he suddenly asked me to write a report on socialized medicine. It was a provocative issue and one which I was not familiar with, but I worked hard. After submission, I went back to data gathering. One morning, he suddenly announced that his book should have a chapter on Magsaysay's first lady. Luz Banson Magsaysay. He assigned me to prepare a report. I worked very hard, read everything available about her. I personally interviewed her and others who knew her well. I wanted to produce a report worthy of his academic standards. I was very inspired when I started writing the report. Then suddenly it happened. I could not continue writing. My fears of displeasing JVA swept away whatever confidence I had. There were personal issues as well. An older friend bluntly informed JVA about my plight. According to my friend, he was surprised and exclaimed, but she is very good. She writes very well. The great JVA, political scientist, scholar, acclaimed researcher, then descended from the Mount Olympus of public administration gods and talked to his terrified data gatherer. We spoke in design and he asked me about my background, my fears and my insecurities. Most important, he assured me that I was doing well in my work. With his encouragement, I finally conquered, conquered my terrors and moved on. From being one of my first professors, to training me in actual research, to personally taking an interest in his lowest ranking research assistant, to welcoming me eventually as fellow professional and colleague in public administration was a long journey. JBA was a man of many talents and advocacies even as he institutionalized the Filipino language policy. He remained faithful to the Visayan language, especially its music and poetry. Finally, we all know JVA as a man of peace. Many of us are journeying with him on different paths in different ways, including myself. In the Beatitudes or Sermon on the Mount, our God of peace taught, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. 
truly, JVA is a peacemaker. He is blessed. He is a child of God. Rest peacefully in the arms of your father, JVA. Amen. Dagang salamat, Secretary Liling. Our next speaker is a fellow Bolano, a personal friend and a professional confidant. Please welcome UP Professor Emeritus of Economics and former Socioeconomic Planning NEDA Secretary, Dr. Ernesto M. Pernia. My link to Pepe Abueva is foundational in the sense that both of us have roots in Bohol, the home province of one of our national heroes, Francisco Dagohoy, known for the longest rebellion in Philippine history against the Spaniards, lasting 85 years. This probably made Pepe also a rebel, but of a different kind, that is one who uses the weapon of the mind for important national causes. Though I did not get to meet Pepe in my youth, I had already heard of him then. I finally got to meet Pepe in person shortly after I joined the faculty of the UP School of Economics. In 1979, when Pepe was the secretary of the United Nations University based in Tokyo, he invited then professor, former UP President Salvador Lopez to undertake a survey of research and training institutions in selected parts of the world, which could be associated with the United Nations University. Pepe suggested to Mr. Lopez to contact the UP School of Economics Dean Jose Encarnacion for a faculty member who would help him in his project. And I was fortunate to be tapped for it. My visits to Tokyo and the UNU, United Nations University, made me closer to Pepe through our interactions and substantive discussions. Sometime in 2001, Pepe visited me in my office to discuss his plan to establish Kalayaan College, to which I agreed and was only willing to contribute to the startup fund. This made me a founding member and a trustee of the board, a first-hand witness to Pepe's dedication to education, extending UP's values of honor and excellence beyond the walls of the National University. In 2008, Pepe Abueva of Bohol, Mag Albarasin of Cebu, Bal Indriga of Leyte, and myself, plus a few others, formed the Kadugung Bisaya National Association that aim to foster and preserve the Visayan languages, culture, arts, and music, thereby ensuring that these are not forgotten and just relegated to the bust dustbin of history. On November 22, 2008, the Kadugong Visaya group states si Lapu Lapu, si Rosas Pandan, a Visaya musical extravaganza. This entailed a lot of dedicated and laborious work, the most important of which was contacting and getting known Visayan artists to perform in the show. Through all these painstaking preparations, there was Pepe quietly but effectively making constructive comments. All told, the show and concert was a hit and a smashing success way beyond our expectations. It even elicited a repeat performance. Pepe was the source of inspiration of this extravaganza. In 2013, rather, the Bohol, UP Bohol Advisory Council was formed on the appeal of then Bohol Governor Edgar Chato. With Pepe's leadership, we, that is Pepe, Cesar Saloma, Ramon Clarete, myself, and a couple of others agreed to form the council out of our collective love for Bohol. 
we met as and when major projects and development directions of the province were to be decided. The new Bohol in Panglao International Airport and the modern provincial hospital currently under construction are two such projects. The work of the council entailed our visiting the province. In one such visit, our group had the opportunity to visit Pepe's hometown province, hometown, rather hometown Duero, where he graciously toured us, showing us his parents' antique home. To conclude, Pepe Abueva was such a gentle, meek and mild human being, which masked his intellectual prowess and competence in many areas. He loved our country. He is a national patriot. Thank you, Pepe, for your friendship and leadership. Salamat kaayo, Dr. Ernie Perenia. We will now take a quick break with the performance of Dr. Josevi Abueva's favorite kundiman, Madud Nila. Oh, no. 
Thank you very much, Bianca Camille Lopez Aguila Soprano, accompanied by Dr. Michelle Nicolas Soro on the piano. Special thanks to Dean Laverne de la Peña of the UP College of Music. Our next speaker is a dear friend and a neighbor in Beverly Hills, Antipolo. Please welcome the former UP Vice President for Academic Affairs and Professor, University Professor Emeritus of English, Comparative Literature and Creative Writing at the University of the Philippines, Dr. Hemino Henson Abad. <clears throat> Start my video. Start. Um, there's Kenya or not? Um, can I be heard? Yes, yes, Jim, we can hear you. Please okay. go ahead. Okay. Um, I call paper to mind as an authentic public servant. He truly, he truly lived the University of Philippines motto, which even today cries out, honor and integrity. Pepe was a staunch defender of democracy and human rights, a kind-hearted man of peace with a quiet cheer of spirit. That is how I remember Pepe. He advocated a society, for example, a society without killing or hung the threat of killing. I remember when he was UP president, he affirmed a 1980, this was in 1989. He affirmed in 1989, a previous 1981 accord with our national with our department of national defense it barred the police and military forces from entering any up campus without prior permission and also required law enforcers and government troops anywhere in the philippines to report to UP if they had arrested or detained any UP student, faculty, or staff. He also abolished the president, the UP president's discretion as regards student admission to UP. The UP president cannot exercise any direction as regards student admission because we have the UPCAT. And he introduced, as already mentioned, the socialized tuition fee, which effectively subsidized UP's lower income students. I, I wish to conclude with a poem because it is of course dedicated to Pepe Abueba uh, because he had, I think, uh, a, a very important understanding of language. You know, I also think of Pepe as a man of his words, because I think the authentic human being is a man of his words. Uh, there is something about language that uh, Pepe, I think, was very aware of. It is a human invention, because without language, 
we would have no memory even, no history, which is a people's memory, uh, no culture, no civilization. And human language is humanity's mother tongue. Without language, we would have no consciousness of what is real or what is true. Uh, so, uh, Pepe wanted a vigorous national language. Uh, uh, and uh, just the other day, uh, I have the inquirer uh, of August 24, and I was, and I, 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 I mark uh, a news item on the front page uh, that there is an online dictionary called Marayum, an online dictionary called Marayum. And that dictionary has the regional languages uh, translated, of course, into English. Uh, but all, well, the major Philippine languages are there, including Tagalog, because our national language is supposed to be Tagalog based. Uh, I think this is an important contribution to the development of the national language. Because, you know, uh, every human community, whether Cebuano or Tagalog or Ilocano would have its own language, which is its own people's uh, memory, which is their own consciousness of their reality, their experience through changes in their culture, uh, in their history. So it is important. Uh, uh, um, a dictionary, online dictionary like Marayum is a very significant contribution to the uh, development of a national community. So there is a difference no, between uh, national community and our separate uh, regional communities, which have their own languages. So. Uh, that's why I think the authentic human being is the man of his words. And uh, if, with your indulgence, I would, I would recite this short poem uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated to uh, my very dear friend, uh, Pepe Aboiba. The future is first shaped by words whose meanings shift as ourselves change word for word out of the ashes. So put the word down on paper. From there, your cities build. Blank is context, white and fruitful void. Words establish our reality before shifting sands. As the last ice age melts, our shores become definite. Our words demarcate abysses. So put down the word with care, for it shall carry us, give us our exact weight and define all possibilities. Our future lies in how we use our words. Hope too is a blank page, the womb where words sleep to shape all eventfulness. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, especially for the most heartfelt rendition of your poem, Jimmy Abad. 
Our next speaker is um, the former Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs at UPD Liman and former Vice President of the University of the Philippine System uh, and former Ched Chairperson, currently the University of the East President, Dr. Esther Albano Garcia. Good evening, everyone. Not too long after Dr. Jose Pepe Agueva became President of UP, I was appointed and loaned from UP to DOST as Deputy Director of a new council. So we really did not get to know each other. I was surprised when two years later, he had me called to his office to ask me to come back to UP as Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs when he had decided to take over the Chancellorship of UP Diliman on a concurrent capacity. After a year, however, he decided that Diliman should have a Chancellor and he appointed me as Vice President Academic Affairs to replace Jimmy Abad, who had decided he wanted more time to pursue his passion, writing. As Jimmy put it to me, because he was also the one who convinced me, Esther, my muses are leaving me. So I had no choice but to agree to become Vice President Academic. As I was preparing for this talk, I tried to recall what we had accomplished when we were working together as the Abeba team, together with Bong Nuki, Ned Echanis, Olive Kawili, Emer Roman, Popolo Tilia, Raul Pangalangan, Philip Medalia, Tudong Nemenso, Lady Carino, Ruben Villarreal, among others. And many of these came to mind. Some of the major ones are the following. UPOU had the beginnings as the UP Distance Education Program. It was proposed by then Chancellor of UP Visayas, Francisco Nemenso Jr., who got the idea, of course, when he was in UK, from UKOU. In fact, our first consultants in the program were provided by the British Council. UPLB had a program called the STUDI, S-T-U-D-I, whereby teachers of science in basic education took distance courses in UPLB using modules with Dr. Maria Cristina Padolina as head. So when we had set up the UP, in, uh, the Open University Program, we requested Dr. Padolina to head it. Later, the program became a new constituent university, the UPOU. Second, President Abueva's interest in policy research was very evident in his strengthening of the UPCIDS, the setting up of the Educational Policy Research Program, the Centro Nangwika, and Center for Women's Studies. He, him he himself led the teams to study the conversion of the Subic Naval Base, Clark Air Base, and Fort Bonifacio in what they are, into what they are now, and of course, he reserved spaces for UP, for future UP campuses. The initial studies and the commercialization of the then idle lands of UP to generate income for the university were done during the time of President Abueva. Initial studies. We were worried about the fact that squatters were already invading even the areas very close to the academic buildings. At one point, some of our Muslim brothers tried to occupy part of the old golf course, the corner of uh, Commonwealth and uh, the Commonwealth and of course the UP, uh, UP campus. We had to get the help of our Muslim congressmen friends, especially the alumni, to convince them to vacate. At that time, the UP officials were looking at how Chulalongkorn University had made use of its big land holdings to a, in a highly profitable enterprise to generate income for the university to fund its core function of instruction, research, and extension. At the end of President Abeba's term, 
the plan was almost ready for implementation. However, it took another six years before it finally became a reality. Interestingly, the team that prepared the plans during the President Abeba's term were the same team that implemented it under President Nemenso's term. Thus, we now have the Techno Hub, which gives UP some fiscal elbow room. Danny Korn, you should thank President Abeba for this. For an academic, he had the administrative foresight to provide substantial benefits to the faculty and staff. He, together, the then VP for Finance and Administration, Dr. Ned Echanis, with a loan from Pagibig, built 18 four-story buildings for the housing of faculty and staff within the campus, 16 for UP Diliman and UP Manila personnel located in Diliman, and two located in UP Baguio. He was very supportive and implemented the policy on democratic consultation in the choice of officials of the university, especially the department chairman, the deans and the chancellors. And of course, as VPAA, I had to do a lot of this talking with all of the constituents on who we should be, uh, who should be appointed, et cetera, as deans, et cetera, and chancellors. Looking back, I think it was a good way to choose the leaders in the university, but there were a few lapses and we learned a few hard lessons along the way. And last but not the least, uh, the socialized tuition fee policy was initiated during his term. Uh, it was already described by both President Nemenso and VP Jimmy Abad, so I will not uh, describe them anymore. Anyway, unfortunately, in 2018, this was stopped when the government implemented the free tuition policy for all public higher education institutions. I actually went to Congress to tell them about the socialized tuition fee structure of UP. I told them that if you have the money, you should follow the UP example. Because if I remember correctly, uh, uh, the, lowest, the, the lowest income groups had an, a daily allowance. They had a well, monthly allowance of, if I remember correctly, 1,500 a month. At that time, that was already a big amount of money. And in fact, uh, uh, the, some very poor students of ours were able to finish their uh, courses because of this allowance. And what happened was, because UP Diliman and UP Manila, the richest campuses, um, we agreed, uh, President Abeba was the one who actually uh, formulated this policy that uh, we'll keep the, the old um, amount of money. Uh, we would use that in our, uh, we will not use, uh, have more of it. Instead, what we, what we collect in UP Diliman and UP Manila as excess would be given to, the, to UP Mindanao and also UP Baguio and UP Visayas to, um, to be part of the allowance of the students. So that was really a way of getting poorer students in the university. And that's why I was not very happy when what they did was to give free public, I mean, to give uh, free education in all public higher education institutions, it, even the richest not paying a single centavo. Sabi ko, ang problema nga ng UP kung saan paparada yung mga bata na maraming kotse. As a team, we work very well with each other. In my case, being a scientist, my circle in the university was quite limited to the people in the arts and sciences and engineering. Working with President Abueva, I gained new friends in the other colleges like Emer and Ned and Popoy and Raul. Uh, Ned and uh, Emer and Ned in BA and Popoy and Raul from the College of Law, and even in other campuses like Ruben Villarreal of UPLB. President Abueva required us, especially the VPs, to visit the campuses at least once a quarter and meet with the faculty, researchers, staff, and students. This was a good time for bonding. 
which led to lifetime friendships. It also gave us a chance to see the situation of each campus firsthand and get to know the faculty, staff, and staff in those campuses. When the earthquake in Baguio happened, he decided that we should go see for ourselves the situation in UP Baguio. He brought with him one of those early, self, early models of cell phones, the size of a car battery, which he was carried about, around by his aide. And he decided then that all the campuses should also have these huge cell phones. Those trips gave us a chance to get to know President Abueva better, spending evenings together, singing his favorite Visayan songs. Thank you, President Pepe, for bringing me to your circle and for teaching me all the le lessons of leadership that I carry to this day. Goodbye, Mr. President. We'll certainly miss you and your Matudmila. You will now happily join Manai Kuring in the next live. Good evening. To you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Dr. Esther Albano Garcia. Our next speaker, Sat in the BOR, a student regent during the presidency of Dr. Sevi Abueva. He again answered the call of service to sit as regent during the terms of President Alfredo E. Pascual and President Danilo L. Concepcion. Please welcome former regent attorney Angelo Gigil Jimenez. Um, to the Abueva family uh, who, is, who are here today, my deepest sympathies. And to the, the University of the Philippines, thank you for having me. I feel very privileged to be among your numbers today. I am not particularly close to President Pepe Abueba, but he took an interest in student leaders in particular. It seems he was interested in leadership in general. He was always talking to us about transformative leaders, leadership written by James. MacGregor Burns, I remember at the time. He took an interest on in me, probably more than I thought he did. Towards the end of my term as chair of the Diliman Student Council, he asked to see me at his office in Quezon Hall. I didn't know what for, but someone's like that, you go. Throughout my undergrad and law school days, I rarely wore socks. And at that time, I was glad I did. Because as soon as I announced my presence, he led me to a corner towards a raised platform of tatami mats and proceeded to take off his shoes. And then with moves quite nimble for a man his age, he sank down cross-legged to the Japanese style flat cushion seat and seeming from out of nowhere, a tall 1.8 liter bottle of fine sake up out of his hands. He proceeded to pour for me. Kampai. As I drank, I surreptitiously looked down my socks and could hardly hide my relief. It was just fine. A rare thing, too. Walking around the Liman is hard on socks, and I have developed a soft spot for it. As a student dormer, I walked forever and hardly ever used one. I still don't, except on a few occasions, like my wedding. Someone would have walked out on me if I didn't. President Abueba's socks were fine. They were basic, I noted. So we sat there, two men, one older, one younger, in fine foot hoshiris to talk about what else? Japan. Kampai. I didn't know about the tragic and painful circumstances of his parents' death in the hands of the Japanese then. I didn't know that. At the time, he seems to be a Japan admirer. He spent a decade at the university, United Nations University in Tokyo. I no longer know, can recall what we talked about, but I did, I did remember holding my own in the pleasant tit for tat. I was then already an incipient Japanophile, having spent a month in Japan on a JICA youth exchange program, and later in life would end up a labor diplomat at the Philippine Embassy in Tokyo and live in a flat close to the UN University at Aoyama Dori in Shibuya. I don't know how to explain this, but Pepe Abueba was formal and yet warm. 
I expected the former, but was absolutely floored by the latter. I did not expect it. Not at that time. I was not what you might call a tractable student leader. You don't get to be a student leader in my time if you are tractable, especially to power. I was, in fact, openly critical of President Abueba and of the Board of Regents even. Just over a year before that sake talk, I was one of a handful of student leaders who stormed the BOR at Quezon Hall. Actually, I did mean to storm it. I was the chair of the local concerns committee, and I was asked to join then Regent Bong Bungolan before the board to present the student exposition of the Socialized Tuition and Financial Assistance Program, which uh, Vice President uh, Professor Jimmy Abad calls St. Fap. But a handful of those with me tried to bodily pull Bong out of the boardroom instead in the belief that his presence would only legitimate any decision the board will make on St. Fat. His body pulled halfway from the door, Bong clung desperately to the doorpost, refusing to go. It's a long story, but I ended up joining him inside the board as originally planned. But the disruption was so complete, the BUR meeting ended. President Abueba, the target of the student's ire, was nowhere to be found. And among the regions left, there was a regent, regent, I remember, Pons Matay, proffering us cigarettes from a pack of imported Blue Seal Winston Red, nervously puffing his cigarette. We joined him to calm ourselves down. But no luck, because from below we hear the commotion. President Abueba made the mistake of coming down directly in front of the main driveway of Quezon Hall instead of the small exit door of the North Wing. And he went straight, straight into the maw of an angry mass of students who tried to stop from leaving. I mean, the dean of verbal abuse, he managed to get into his white Toyota high ace van, I recall. That enraged the students even more. And they started, from all the reports, to lip it, rock it, shake it as their huge number now, with President Abuel still apparently inside. I wouldn't know what was in his mind then. I would have known mine if I were in that situation. I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know if he panicked. He's an exit through quick stop and obviously trying not to hit anyone, but seeming to. But that would have been impossible. I didn't hear of anyone seriously getting hurt with that, but that too became an issue. I'm sure it was traumatic to President Abueba too, something he is not likely to forget dealing with us henceforth. But there he was, an admirer of Japan despite the tragedy of his parents, smiling at the representative of one of his tormentors. Then, still smiling, he said, Your name is on the short list submitted by the Kasama sa UP as regent, as, as nominee for student regent. I said, I know. But quickly, I, I, I explained that I am not a first choice. The Diliman Student Council had to nominate me because our constitution made years before me states that the chair is automatically Diliman's, the largest constituency nominee. And whether they were conscious of it or not when they voted me as chair is beside the point. It was the constitution. He was not true because he proceeded to drop the bombshell. He said, am I right recommending you to the president of the Philippines for that position? It didn't appear like a question and it clearly was not a social call after all. Now, he knew that I was a chair but was minority in my own council. The students of Diliman picked me as the head but did not give me the majority. My small party, an independent one, gained some sort of majority only after my term. Oh, incidentally, I was with Fidel Nemenso with that adventure. In short, he knew I was under extreme pressure from power, powerful sectors to refuse the appointment if it came to that. I realized suddenly that he would be embarrassed before President Corazon Aquino if he recommended someone who will refuse. Sensing it 
and bolstered by a shot of sake, I said to him, if you mean I will refuse an appointment, my answer is no. It would be shirking a constitutional duty. I cannot do that. I'm a law student. But if you're asking for my permission now, my answer is no, never. Don't do that. It won't help me with my constituencies. You are, after all, quote unquote, I said this, the enemy. I realized he was really testing my strength. If I can withstand pressure. Before him, I wanted to come out fighting, not subservient, not even grateful for what he obviously was telling me. Lines were drawn that even an independent student leader like me cannot efface. You simply don't bargain with the enemy. Such was the spirit of our time. Then he asked, how would I manage my role then under that circumstances if I were to be a member of the board? I told him the students fought for a seat in the board not to control it. We don't have the votes. And unlike today, the board was dominated by presidential appointees. We see it for as a powerful bully pul pulpit. But I told him I see my job is to present the student's perspective as forcefully as I could, mediated only by my own conscience. Nothing more. He smiled. I think he got his answer, whatever it was. And my independence was tested too. It was a very rough year. At one time, the University Council of UP Manila supported their student council and issued a joint resolution condemning my vote in the board, allowing five students from the UP College of Medicine to graduate. It's a long story. But the College of Medicine argued that the students were not morally fit to become members of the medical profession. And using the very same ground which the Supreme Court had already rejected in finding for the students. It was personally jarring to be condemned by your own constituents in a formal resolution with the university council. Like everyone else, I wanted to be loved, not hated. But I cannot in conscience vote for something that could later on be applied to all students because it will set a precedent. In the first place, it was not in the rules set beforehand. It violates the fundamental tenets of fairness. My instinct as a, law, as a law student tells me. In the second place, how can we ever set moral standards for UP students? Just get the I never met President Abweb after my term as a student regent, but there were times when he did support me, like when he asked me to sign the, the UP the ALG Accords, I asked him to sponsor as well my initiative to declare UP a zone of peace, freedom, and neutrality to encourage dialogue and even negotiations because that was then a coup struck regime. But I left UP and I never met him again. But I remembered before when I last saw him, he asked me to feel free to visit him at the NCPAG when I become a lawyer. When I was in Japan, I would remember him every time I passed by Ayama Dori. That is all. But decades later, when lightning struck me again and I became once more a member of the Board of Regents, I really wanted to see him. I wanted to see him because the more I look at UP, the more complex it become. It became. I cannot see where it starts and where it ends. I needed wisdom from the wise men and women of my youth in particular, and President Abueba in particular as well. I see issues in the university clouded clouds of strong passions and vertiginous moral ambiguities where among ourselves, academic freedom is employed both as branding reproach and self-serving defense of choice. Sometimes, I no longer know what it means, only what it does not mean. And I am a lawyer. I, I see academic units whose speech are being torn apart, selectively clinging partly to man-made rules of law favorable, favorable to them when wisdom and, rest, and restraint could have served us all better. 
I see the best not wishing to lead and faculties during the pandemic openly admitting mental stasis that disables them from reflecting in the future of their colleges. See a very conservative institution rattled by the sweeping change brought about by the pandemic. I want to ask President Abueba, what UP rules the world? What kind of world will we get? Would it be like what UP is today? For one, will housing be like our housing, where many have none, and when some people, and I have this on good authority, live like animals? Will the edifices be like some of our buildings run down, with some completed years before but cannot be used because someone forgot to apply for water and electricity connection? Or will it be true to our best image of ourselves? I would like to believe in the latter. I wanted to see President Abueba because I wanted to ask very difficult questions about the UP we all love so much and want to serve, even for free in my case. I knew from experience he will be able to help me question my basic assumptions and perhaps prove me wrong or use his experience inside me. I will, I will choose to take. But then, only recently, I am no longer regent, and President Abueba is no. I don't really know how we lost a truly wise man, wise men and women the most, and that is today. Bye, Sensei. Today I am wearing my best pair of socks. Once again, that is to the Abueba family. Thanks very much, former Regent Attorney Gigil Jimenez. We now would like to share with everyone a video tribute to Dr. Jose Veloso Abueva, lovingly produced by TVUP, directed by Emeritus Professor Gigi Javier Alfonso, and presented by a seasoned broadcasting practitioner and senior lecturer at the UP College of Mass Communication, Pinky Aceron. We are going to present a celebration of life by Dr. Jose Veloso Abueva. Celebrating the life of Jose V. Abueva. In one of his blog posts back in 2015, Dr. Jose Pepe Veloso Abueva shared what he wrote in his column in the Bohol Chronicle. And I quote, when I turned 80 years in 2008, we distributed white t-shirts with a blazing message in front. If things get better with age, then I'm approaching magnificent. End of quote. Dr. Jose Villabueva, Professor Emeritus and 16th President of the University of the Philippines, non-killing peace activist and political and constitutional reformer, had reached peak magnificence even before his passing on August 18 at the age of 93. Born on May 25, 1928, in Tagbilaran City, Bohol, Abueva was the second of seven children of Teodoro Abueva and Purificacion Veloso. He and his siblings are survivors of tragedy and war. After his parents were tortured and taken away by the Japanese forces, Abueva, then a teenager, found and retrieved their remains from a hill where Filipino resistance fighters were executed. The story is retold in Japanese Buddhist philosopher and fellow peace advocate Daisaku Ikeda in his book, One by One published in 2004. Eventually, Abueva entered UP and earned his Bachelor of Arts degree in Arts Law, cum laude, in 1951, becoming a member of Phi Kappa Phi and Pi Gamma Mu Honor Societies. He earned his Master of Public Administration in 1954 and his PhD in Political Science, minor in Sociology in 1959, both from the University of Michigan. He started teaching and research in UP in 1950. He began as graduate assistant, then became instructor in political science and sociology at the UP Diliman College of Liberal Arts, then professor of public administration. 
He served as assistant dean for academic instruction and research from 1963 to 1970 of the then UP College of Public Administration or UPCPA. He was founding editor of the UPCPA's Philippine Journal of Public Administration and became the first president of the UP Faculty Association. In the mid-1960s, he pioneered development-related studies in UP and established the Doctor of Public Administration program at the UPCPA. He was visiting professor of political science at the City University of New York from 1966 to 1967 and Yale University from 1969 to 1970. He also worked with the Ford Foundation from 1973 to 1977. He served in various government posts, including as executive director of the Joint Executive Legislative Local Government Reform Commission, as secretary of the Constitutional Convention, and as executive secretary of the Metro Manila Councilors Assembly. In 1977, he was recruited by the United Nations University in Tokyo. He served as secretary of the UN University Council, as director of the UN University Office for North America, and as director of planning and evaluation for the UN University. He stayed for 10 years in Japan, but neither Abueva nor his family bore any hatred for the Japanese. As Ikeda shares, and I quote, Abueva's memories of his loving parents have sustained him, and his determination to work for peace is motivated by his wish to honor them. He has been utterly devoted to peace, determined to keep others from experiencing the kind of tragedy that he did, end of quote. In 1987, he became president of UP, serving until 1993 and concurrently serving as UP Diliman Chancellor from 1990 to 1991. During his term, the Socialized Tuition Fee Assistance Program, or SDFAP, was established in 1987. He also institutionalized a Filipino language policy within the university. He marched with the UP community to protest the proposed RPUS Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation and Peace. He dealt with issues such as the land dispute between UP and Barangay Cruz na Ligas, the reorganization of UP Manila, the transfer of the College of Public Administration from Manila to Diliman, and the transfer of the College of Fisheries from Diliman to Iloilo. During his term, there was also a call for a revised general education program which created courses like Science, Technology and Society, or STS, and Comunicacion 1 and 2. In keeping with his lifelong advocacy for peace, he established the Balay Internacional in UB Diliman. This included the Balay Kalinao, or House of Peace, which he dedicated to Daisaku Ikeda to symbolize the understanding and shared cause for peace. A dedicated educator, Abueva continued to serve UP as Professor of Political Science and Public Administration from 1993 to 1998 and Professor Emeritus of Public Administration and Political Science from 1998 onwards. In 2000, he and several other UP faculty members established the Kalayan College, becoming its first president. As a political science and public administration scholar, Abueva remained in active service to the academe and the government. He was a member of the Presidential Task Force on Education in 2007 under President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. As an advisor to the Citizens Movement for Federal Philippines, he was actively involved in advocating constitutional reform to establish a federal parliamentary democracy. He served on social weather stations, the Center for Media Freedom and Responsibility, and the Philippine Center for Investigative Journalism. And as a committed advocate for non-killing, he was co-founder and convener of the Movement for a Non-Killing Philippines co-author of Towards a Non-Killing Filipino Society, developing an agenda for research, policy, and action, 
and a member of the Governing Council of the International Center for Global Non-Killing. Throughout his life, Abueva received numerous awards and citations, including the Outstanding Young Man Award in Political Science, the Most Outstanding Alumnus in the Social Sciences by the UP Alumni Association, the Award of Recognition by the U.S. Big Ten University's Alumni Associations, an Honorary Doctorate from the Soka University in Tokyo, and the Leadership Award from the UPNC PAG during its 50th anniversary. Abueva is author, co-author, or editor of several books published here and abroad, including Focus on the Barrio, Ramon Magsaysay, A Political Biography, The Philippines into the 21st Century, Filipino Nationalism, Leadership and Authority in Asia, Political and Administrative Development, Development Administration in Asia, New Challenges for Development and Modernization, Filipino Spiritual Culture, Social Transformation and Globalization, and Towards the Federal Republic of the Philippines with a Parliamentary Government. Dr. Jose Villabueva embodied the best of UP. Honor, excellence, and an unwavering desire to serve his country for as long as he was able to. His life was dedicated to a noble cause, the cause for peace, nonviolence, and social transformation. A truly magnificent life. Thanks very much, Office of the UP President, Office of the Vice President for Public Affairs, TV UP, and special thanks to the Abueva family for supplying the rare family photos and intimate family videos. And now, we will hear a few words from the Abueva family. On behalf of my siblings, Lanelle, Jobert, and Jonas, Thank you, UP President Danilo Concepcion, Neni Pernia, the Office of the President, and esteemed former colleagues and friends of our father, Jose Pepe Abueva, for this rousing and moving tribute celebrating the researcher, political scientist, scholar, educator, author, writer, organizer, advocate for peace, proud Boholano, and doting loving father, our tatay, or Tats, as we called him, and the genuine love, respect, and care extended throughout his 50-year affiliation and relationship with the University of the Philippines. Tatay's first solo authored book was Focus on the Barrio, published in 1959, while head of research, the research division of the UP Institute of Public Administration. Focus on the Barrio was a case study of the formulation of the Philippine community development program during the first two years of Mang Sai Sai administration. The case study provided an invaluable basis upon which a sound appraisal could be made of the program. Focus on the Barrio was deemed a worthy example of the kind of study, sophisticated approach and revealing in content, which was badly needed and rare in any country at the time. And it was described as a pioneer effort in the Philippines. This high standard of perceptive scholarship and innovation was signature of Tatay's work throughout the following decades. He emphasized research and intellectual vigor and systematically and religiously applied and leveraged all he learned from his PhD in political science at the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, his visiting professorships and lectureships, including as visiting scholar at the East West Center in Hawaii, as visiting professor of political science at Brooklyn College. I was born in Brooklyn, Yale University, Tribhuvan University in Kathmandu, and as a guest lecturer at Cornell, Duke, Tufts, the American University in Beirut, the University of Malaya, Sophia University in Tokyo, Kyoto University, Waseda, Columbia, and University of California, Berkeley, to name a few. 
It was with this background and foundation when, in 1971, as project director of an urban affairs project for the Institute of Philippine Culture for Ateneo de Manila, his team, which included sociologist and development worker Mary Rosales, submitted a working paper entitled Metro Manila Today and Tomorrow. As far as longtime friend and colleague Mary remembers, this was the first time the term Metro Manila was used. Up to that point, it was only referred to as Metropolitan Manila. I'd like to think it was Tatay who coined Metro Manila. Apart from being a man of dignified strength and astute insight, Tatay was a staunch advocate for equality, education for all, peace, truth, nation building, service to the country and freedom. He dedicated this first book, Focus on the Barrio, to his parents, Teodoro Abueva and Purificacion Veloso Abueva. Quote, my beloved parents and heroes of the resistance movement. It was no mystery then that our father, Tatay, and his siblings ended up at UP and thrived in its progressive environment. Our elder sister, Linnell, and our younger brother, Jonas, had the privilege of attending UP. And whilst Jobert and I didn't, or haven't yet, many of our cousins and both nieces, daughters of Linnell, did. Tito Napoleon Billy Abueva was a dean of the College of Fine Arts for years. To get to know Pepe the man, three books are a must read. Tatay's 2008, Reinventing UP as the National University, Learning for Truth, Leadership, and Social Transformation, which includes a part six on the college he founded, Kalayaan College. His books on a non-killing Philippines and global citizenship toward a civilization of wisdom, love, and peace, a dialogue by Jose Villabueva and Daisaku Ikedasama all published while he was president of Kalayan College. The book summarized his life as an educator, visionary, and peace advocate. Amongst Tatay's innovations and reforms at UP, as UP president um, touch upon this evening, was the University Center for Women's Studies, headed at one time by a good friend and a woman I admire, Judy Tagiwalo. Under his term, the faculty grievance committee daycare facility, and housing units in three locations within the campus were also set up. Whilst none of his children pursued study in public administration, we hopefully uphold this legacy of service in other ways. I'm proud to have the blood of resistance and revolution running through my veins, fusing activism and art, mostly thanks to my affiliation with Monique and her New Voice Theater Company. I am a proud member of Gabriela, Vice Chair of Lila Pilipina, our Comfort Women of World War II, and Board Member of the Center for Women's Resources. I'm also proud to be Executive Producer of the New Voice Theater Company, which mounted feminist, political, and socially provocative theater productions, and to currently be the UK Coordinator for One Billion Rising, a global movement to end violence against women. And Tats what's always has always expressed his full support and deep pride in everything I or my siblings did. Tata and Mami were at every single New Voice Company show and concert, always supportive, even though Tate said he never quite understood what I did as a corporate trust banker and product manager. They were extremely proud of all their children, and this pride and unwavering championing was all the fuel we needed to lead purposeful, productive, and fruitful lives. Our parents never demanded anything of us. They let us thrive and spread our wings from a very young age. One of the reasons Tatay took the job of advisor at the Ford Foundation in Nepal in 1973 and as secretary of the United Nations University Council, Tokyo, in 1977 was to give his family the experience of different cultures, travel, learning, and appreciation. Quote, our living, studying, and working abroad enhance our ability to work together. One of the most important lessons Tatay's parents taught their children was the way of life a person of faith should lead. Another was about patriotism and loyalty to country. Lolo and Lola, Lola did not submit to the Japanese nor collaborate with their puppet government. Instead, they joined the underground resistance. 
Many have heard the story of how Tatai's siblings were orphaned at a young age, having lost their parents during World War II. How Tatai had found their remains and brought them in a banca from Valencia to Duero. How the siblings fought and insisted to stay together, even when relatives were offering to divide the seven children amongst them. How Tito Teddy, the eldest, befriended and, and influenced a UP administrator to allow the siblings to live together on the UP campus, Area 17, and study at the UP. My cousins, siblings, and I were regaled with stories during many of the family gatherings and reunions. In true Abueva form, there's a lot of wicked humor and the twinkle of mischief in many a story. The last year and a half with him at the blessed age of 92, 93 in our ancestral home in Beverly Hills, Antipolo, was a precious gift. Dear UP, thank you on behalf of Linnell, Jobert, Jonas and I, and Tatai's siblings who have passed, Teddy, Nene, Billy, Indai, Tony and Ching, and their children for providing refuge to Tatai and his siblings and for creating what would be a home for the orphaned abuevas and a springboard to an illustrious career for the most generous, patriotic, authentic, selfless, and modest of men. To quote Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator, philosopher, and leading advocate of critical pedag pedagogy from his book, Pedagogy of the, Press of the Oppressed, the teacher is of course an artist, but being an artist does not mean that he or she can make the profile, can shape the, the students. What the educator does in teaching is to make it possible for the students to become themselves. There's no such thing as neutral education. Education either functions as an instrument to bring about conformity or freedom. Thank you, Tats, for giving us all that freedom. Daghang salamat kaayo sa tanan. Thanks very much to everyone for making this tribute a truly special celebration of the life and legacy of Dr. Jose Veloso Abueva. This formally concludes the UP tribute for Dr. Jose V. Abueva, the 16th president of the University of the Philippines a man for God, a man for country, and a man for peace. He will be forever remembered, forever missed, and forever loved. In Paradisum de Ducante Angeli, may angels lead you to paradise. You.